And thanks so much uh, for tuning in to Morning Live. Well, changing things up a little bit this morning because our ESCOM CEO is already here. And, of course, um, we are going to now get into that interview with him. ESCOM, of course, hoping that by the end of March uh, it would have done enough, at least, to mitigate its financial and power challenges facing the power utility. The organization is suffering ramifications of decisions that date back several years, including matters of human resources, on the one hand, the persistent outages due to poor power production on the other, and also a failure to maintain its technical facilities uh, as, is also part of the problem. Now, it's been widely reported that ESCOM wants the government to absorb about 100 billion rand of its debt as part of a rescue plan. But the CEO says its management has only submitted a strategy to the board and that they haven't spoken about figures yet. So Pagamani Hadebe, the ESCOM CEO, is here to take us through this discussion and clarify some of these issues for us. Mr. Hadebe, thanks for coming through. Thank you so much for inviting me here. Uh, let's start with, um, I guess, uh, the most pressing issue, and that is of keeping the lights on. So mm. we've been experiencing load shedding after there were very um, many announcements made in uh, the years gone by, and I'm talking about the recent past, about how we would not need to have load shedding in South Africa again. So mm. exactly what is going wrong? Why are we seeing load shedding again? You know, I think you have to understand how the system operates. Uh, firstly, we have what is called installed capacity. That's the amount of electricity we can deliver at any moment in time. And uh, ESCOM uh, produces about uh, 45,000 installed capacity. But what has happened since then is that the unplanned maintenance, otherwise the machines that have been breaking, have increased. And that has been between 10,000 to 11,000 megawatts. But over and above that, we need to prepare for winter, and that is called planned maintenance of roughly about 6,000 or so, which therefore means that from the 45,000 installed capacity, you have about 16,000 that is not operating, that is not readily available. That leaves us with roughly about 29,000 electricity that is available. But the demand has been at 25,000, sorry, 29,000 to 30,000. So that forced us to then make use of our reserves. That is using diesel and also use uh, uh, power storages, uh, water storages, sorry. Mm -hmm. So because of this, then we are vulnerable in that you don't meet your demand very well. If you proceed just delivering electricity, this will bring about the blackouts. So to resuscitate the system and ensure the integrity of the system, what needs to be done then is to ensure build the reserves back. And hence the, the load shedding is not the worst case scenario. The load shedding just ensures that we recoup, we resuscitate the system so that it can work as we move forward. Because if we don't do that, then we're going to have uh, uh, blackouts. And the blackouts, the, the, the ramifications and the, fight, the problems of uh, uh, the blackouts are just too much to contemplate. Now, you see, uh, the explanation that you just give mm. uh, tends to add to mm. the conspiracy theories doing mm. the round. Because yeah. uh, at some point last year, we were told mm. we have surplus yeah. electricity at ESCO. Mm -hmm. So if we have surplus electricity yes. and planning is being done adequately... Yeah. Why, why do we find ourselves in this situation? And to yeah. add to that, we were told that there was a problem with the delivery of coal. And yeah. now we're hearing about maintenance. So which okay. is it really? Now, uh, you see, if you are looking at the maintenance, uh, you can start from 2014 up until now. It's been declining because ESCOM has been through financial problems. They had to look at other options, savings, making savings here and there. And the maintenance decreased from the high of about 26 billion to a low of about 20 billion last year. And this year, we benchmarked this year's budget on last year's, which was 20 billion to 19 billion. So it means that we have not, for the past five, six years, doing efficiently or enhancing the maintenance so that the systems can continue to grow. But why Remember not? that. 
because there was a shortage of money. And uh, the decisions that have been made five, six years back was that we were going to cut on the maintenance. So we've been running a car at 120, 140 kilometers an hour without servicing it any, uh, at any stage of 15,000 kilometers. And it's bound to happen. That's a problem. This is what has happened. So now we then reach a stage, we've been there for 10 months, where the systems are falling apart uh, all around South Africa because they've, they've been run to maximum. So when the story of surplus was being uh, discussed or highlighted, what was not explained is that this has happened amidst the declining maintenance cost. And that's a price that Africans have to pay now. Which is very worrying because this is by no means new. We know what mm. happened in the lead up to the 2010 Soccer World yes. Cup and mm. um, ESCOM, the decisions that were made at that mm -hmm. point and that also yeah. included uh, poor decisions, one would say, yeah. on the part of uh, maintenance of its facilities. Yeah. And now, eight years later, we're still talking about the same thing. It is said, you have to understand maintenance in two forms. There is a planned maintenance. There is unplanned maintenance. Currently, we have a planned maintenance of about 6,000 megawatts. That is building for, uh, for the winter, because in winter, the demand of electricity increases. But when they reduced over the years that planned maintenance, the outcome has been an increase in unplanned maintenance. Hence, the unplanned maintenance has, has increased to between 10 and 11,000. And all of a sudden, we have to pay particular attention on that. And that's what we've been, to, what we've been doing. Uh, uh, what about uh, the power supply from uh, the new stations, the Kusiles? Uh, no. You know, how much are they contributing to the grid? And mm -hmm. is that not sufficient, what you are procuring from uh, the uh, independent producers as well at this yeah. stage? L let me make two examples. So on the one side, we have very old power stations. Average age is 35 to 37, and we are reducing the maintenance. We should have increased the maintenance because they are aging. That is one side of a challenge. The second challenge is that the new build, Ingula, Medupi, Kusile, they've been tripping from day to day, you know, because of their structural challenges and problems. So what was supposed to take over from the old fleet is not working adequately. Hence, we have put on an investigation to find out what exactly is happening. And, and this is a challenge that we are facing because one will have assumed mm. that the old plants will be replaced by the new ones. But as I'm talking to you now, uh, Medu Bengu Sile gives us roughly about 3,009 to 4,000 megawatts, but it trips every time. But for the amount that's been pan that has been spent there, you're talking about 350 billion. South Africans deserve better. Of course we deserve better, and I'm glad yeah. you agree yeah. there, Mr. Yeah. Hadebe, uh, because if you take into consideration the cost overruns mm -hmm. on those projects yes. as well, uh, it, it is scant comfort to hear that they are tripping and yeah. there are problems with that supply. That is new technology. Uh, just taking Medupi, for example, the original budget was 59 billion, but now we're going to spend about 155 billion. That is why we have to investigate what is happening. And we have structural problems that we have to deal with. So something wrong happened along the way. And, and, and speaking about your cash flow uh, problems, yes. Yes. so let me start with the issue of uh, renewable energies. Yes. Now, again, going back to mm. what we were told and yeah. looking at your annual uh, financial report as yes. ESCOM. Mm. And I had a conversation uh, with your spokesperson a couple of weeks ago yes. about the cost of procuring electricity. Mm -hmm. And it would seem as though ESCOM could produce at a cheaper rate than at least according to your annual report mm. than what you have been purchasing from uh, renewable energy producers. Yeah. So why are we going that route when the company is set with cash flow problems. You know, if, if we didn't have renewable energies that gives us roughly about 3,800 megawatts, the country would be in big, big, big trouble. I do agree that, uh, you know, the beat one window, beat two windows, were very expensive. Mm. We are talking about 202 per megawatt, I mean per kilowatt. But uh, when you're looking at beat four, 
it has come down if you're talking about solar and uh, wind. It's sitting at about 90 cents or so. This will come down for over time. But South Africans do not have an option of only concentrating on coal because of the environmental issues. If we are, if we are to follow through on the environmental demands, ASCOM will have to fork out 300 billion over the period of five years to deal with the environmental issues that are coming out from coal. That's the first point. But the second point is that uh, we do not have, as, uh, as ASCOM, sufficient reserves to fund our own operations. We will need to go to the market and borrow to then build new power stations. But unfortunately, the largest majority of the banks, I think out of the four big banks, two have already indicated that they are not going to fund uh, the power stations in two years' time, so two to three years' time. That then creates a problem as to who's going to fund this. And in any case, it's a global trend. This uh, renewable started from 202 per kilowatt hour. Now it's 90 per, per kilowatt hour. It will continue to come down. And at Ours, what rate are you selling it right now? Yes, we are selling uh, exactly at the same price. We are selling it about 90 cents or so. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to talk about uh, these loans that you're yeah. talking about. Yes. Um, uh, firstly, uh, you reportedly are in the process of asking government to take over at least part of your debt, mm -hmm. um, 100 billion rand worth of your debt. Uh, can you confirm or deny that? You know, I can't confirm or deny. I could highlight that Tescom has done a lot of work in turning around this institution. Just looking at uh, the OPEX and CAPEX, we are saving roughly about 20, 20 billion a year out of this. This will save us roughly about 100 billion in five years' time. But that is not sufficient to keep uh, ASCOM you know, operating efficiently. But we have taken a step forward. We have identified other measures that are necessary for us to at least be able to keep our head above the water. We're going to save an additional 33 billion in another four years' time or so. Okay. But that is not enough. I'm coming to your question. Mm -hmm. That is not enough. Why is it not enough? It's because our borrowing, sitting at 419 billion, has destroyed our balance sheet. Now we need to find means and ways of enhancing or of optimizing our balance sheet. There are a couple of things we can do. We can sell and lease back, for example, Midup and Gusile. But the problem is Midup and Gusile, the price is very high. What is a fair value? Is it 50 billion? Then we are not going to get the fair price of what mm. you paid. So we are looking at a number of options without confirming whether we are talking to government about 100 billion or not. But there are discussions at the government level that have gone beyond the board of ESCOM where we are looking at the possibilities. Because the truth of the matter is that ASCOM cannot solve itself okay. out of this challenge. So effectively, you are going to ask government to absorb some of your debt? It's equity, it could be a debt a review. It's a number of options that we have. But I can't say we only have one option, 100 billion. There are a number of options that we have put on the table on government. We do appreciate that government is facing its own challenges. But ultimately, it will be the shareholder that decides what needs to be done. I just want to highlight that the challenges that ESCOM is facing on the balance sheet cannot be solved by ESCOM alone. Uh, just looking at the numbers now, the earnings, what ESCOM earns is roughly about 42 billion. But servicing debt, just servicing debt, demands about 50 billion, which means that we'll continue on this trajectory for a long time. Hence, the debt will increase to about 65 mm. billion in three years' time. Unless we are able to come up with a solution on the balance sheet, then we'll have dealt with other issues. Mr. Hadebe, there was the loan uh, from uh, the Chinese yes. that uh, has had quite a number of South Africans, you yeah. know, hot under the collar yeah. because of the lack of detail yeah. that has been provided to the public. As a public yeah. entity, mm -hmm. why does ESCOM not feel the need to divulge the details of uh, the loan agreement? We, we did divulge, you know, it depends. You know, there, is, uh, there are clauses that uh, do not allow you to divulge all the information. 
We did indicate that it's a 15 year, but it is a grace period of five years, so it will be 10 years. We did indicate there was no middle person or middle man who was paid. We did indicate that there was no person who was a contact point, that we only paid the legal fees like a normal institution. And we were Which paying- Which was how much? Uh, we paid roughly, I think it's 0 0.25 of, uh, of the loan, which is a normal practice. But when you enter a transaction of this sort, sometimes you do provide certain particular information, but there's information that you cannot provide because the person who's lending you money doesn't want that and it's part and parcel of the contract because it affects other transactions that are becoming up. What's the but interest rate on that agreement? Let, 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 let me highlight. It's about 5%. five percent. It's cheaper than what we're getting from the market, which was 7.58%. It's the cheapest funding we have received. And I am aware why South Africans were concerned about this. Mm -hmm. It's because a transaction of this sort that had taken place, they had a number of players that were paid, and the cost was very high at about 10%. The cost was 10%. There were runners that had to be paid quite a lot of money. It is alleged that they were paying 350 million. We don't have that. That's but a clean do you understand why people become apprehensive when you don't divulge the uh, full spectrum of uh, the agreement? Because uh, mm. people then start to fill in the blanks for themselves. And mm. if you look at what happened in Zambia, mm. you know, there was this yeah. takeover by stealth, essentially, yeah. um, of their power utility. And people yeah. were worried that the same could happen here in South Africa. But yeah. also with regard to the IPPs, the agreement mm. that was signed mm. um, uh, with the uh, producers there, why has some of the information still not been put out in the public domain? Why is it so important to keep some of that information away. Let, let me start with the Chinese. The only story we didn't provide was the interest that needs to be paid. The rest of the info information was provided. We provided the information, as I've already indicated, of the players that would be there. We provided the maturity. We further provided as to who and how this would be paid. The only thing that was not provided was interest, because that's the agreement that we had. We even indicated that this is cheaper than the amount that was raised in the global mm. market, which is open. But you in will understand that if you are not telling us yes. how much, we, how, why should we believe that it's cheaper? And which is mm. why it's so important to put we, the information out. We, we did highlight. We, in, in fact, the only story, in all fairness, because of the agreement we have, was interest. We did highlight that the only payment that was paid was legal fees like any other transaction. We also further highlighted that we had a grace period of five years. We also highlighted that there was no runner that was involved. We also highlighted that there was no person who advised us on the transaction. The transaction is between two entities. But what is important is that we highlighted also that the guarantee is not the assets that belong to ESCOM. In other words, if we don't pay, that the Chinese Development Bank will take over uh, mm. ESCOM. I just, I just want to give answers. I want to go to headlines. Okay. I want to go to headlines. Let me just add I want to go to headlines and then yeah. we'll come back okay. and I'll allow you to finish okay. no, you know, uh, at uh, leisure because okay. otherwise I'm going to rush you. So yeah. uh, Mr. Pagamani Hadebe, the CEO of ESCOM, talking to us yeah. about some of the issues related to the power utility. Yeah. Well, let's go to news headlines with Leanne and then we'll wrap this interview up with okay. Mr. Hadebe. Leanne?